computer. Hello, and thank you very much, uh, Kevin, for coming. Can I introduce Kevin Healy, who, for those of you who don't know yet, scored 89% in the SBL exam for ACCA in June. And so congratulations, Kevin. What an incredible achievement. Thanks, Alan. Thanks very much. Um, do you know what, Kevin? I was uh, hoping that you'd be able to give some sort of advice to the people who are following you. Um, you know, when we were doing the course, we had this sort of, uh, you know, the four pillars of success in SBL, the content, the exam technique, the CB, the computer uh, environment, based environment and uh, the exam, and then peak performance. I wonder if uh, you could uh, have a, a thought about which of those was the more important or what was your thoughts on that? Sure, yeah. Um, so, like certainly the the content is actually the, probably the least important I found of the, of the four of them. You know, really the other three is, is what it's all about. Um, I think I think you might have said to us that 90% of the content won't come up in the exam, you know, only kind of 10% of it will come up, you know. So for me, it definitely turned out that, um, you know, by just really focusing on the exam technique, you know, being comfortable in the, the CB environment and kind of having the head right on the day, you know, getting your getting yourself mentally kind of ready was just as important, you know, and, and really just sticking to your technique at all times in the exam, kind of nearly regardless of what they throw at you or what comes up to kind of keep to the plan and keep keep to the technique at all times, you know? Well, Kevin, you've really, <laughs> you've really helped me there because it's not easy for a student to hear me say those things during the talk course and the revision. But really, you've come out the other side. You've scored 89%, third in the world, obviously first in Ireland. I think it's a real relief for a student to hear somebody like you who can really uh, endorse those uh, that approach. Um, on the exam technique, we often focus on the, the key words and we do actually use um, sort of past student um, mocks. And you'd be glad to hear we use your mocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if you've done so well, it's uh, reassuring for a student to see somebody who's done so well and then to say, oh, so this is what they were actually doing. And we noticed that you were, one of the things we always talk about was get the key words out of the task and then use it to structure a, uh, an answer. And we noticed that you were using the, uh, um, the highlighter in the mocks. You were saying there the last time we talked that maybe in the actual exam, it's difficult to do that, but you were able to maybe bold it perhaps. Yeah, bold or underline it or whatever way you can to get it to kind of stand out. Um, I just find that, like I said before, kind of to stick to your plan in terms of the question you have there, keep going back to value and customer segmentation analysis and, and your industry and your pressure marks and kind of stick to those four things really at all times rather than kind of, it's easy to get lost in these questions. There's so much information there, you know. That's true. And I think what I what I understand you saying is to really find those key words and then mm -hmm. structure an answer around them. That worked for you, did it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think probably at first it's it's hard to find the keywords, but I think the more practice we did in class and the mocks and, and in my own time, you start to they kind of stand out to you after a while. You do so many questions that it just you can kind of see straight away what the examiner is looking for in the questions, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and highlighting it definitely helps then if you're if you're panicking or time time is tight in the exam, keep going back to those words that you have colored or, or in bold or whatever you know yeah and then i noticed that you did the um a pat we do uh, you know five mocks as it were um to get used to the computer-based exam environment and i think you would recommend doing the mocks isn't that what you would say yeah big time like i said the exam technique is is definitely probably the most important part of it so the more you can do if you can do more in your own time like don't even worry about doing the exam exam over again but just keep that it, like we were saying earlier about the keywords, your technique, you know, the industry, your uh, professional marks, just keep practicing that over and over again. So on the day, on the day of the exam, you're just, you're just doing exactly what you've been doing all the way along. It's nearly second nature then, you know. Thanks, Kevin. You've really helped me out here and other students who are following after you. You're at the sort of the top of the mountain and they're at, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> starting off on a, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a tough, it's a tough journey. And I suppose, uh, the, the one last thing that I was thinking of was that idea we were always trying to get around uh, to talk about peak performance that sometimes <laughs> in the exam, you know, you can get that feeling that things aren't going so well and you can get a bit dispirited. But I think you said that when you were um, coming out of the exam, you didn't necessarily feel like you'd scored like a, a world record <laughs> score. Yeah, but... yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, and, and I suppose part of it is like it's a four hour exam and it's just such a marathon that you're so exhausted at the end of it. It's hard to really know, you know, can't even remember, you know, what happened in the exam or what you put in, you know, but it is such a slog and time is so tight that you're constantly under pressure that there's not much time to kind of reflect maybe on, on what you've done. And I suppose that's why I'm probably talking to you now about the, the, the different pillars you have there and why they worked is because I didn't feel like I'm out of it, you know, extremely strong. I kind of thought I passed it, but, you know, it just shows that it does work. You know what I mean? The plan does work because it certainly was a big surprise for me when I got my score, you know? So it just shows that that's, that sort of technique is what the uh, correctors are looking for in the exam, you know? Brilliant. Thank you. And I remember when we talked before, you said about one of the things that I always try and get students to think of on day one is, you know, to aim high and have uh, to set down, to physically write down a, a target for what they want to achieve. I, I don't know if it's voodoo or what, uh -huh. but there's there. I think there is something in it. I've had lots of students write to me afterwards and said, you know, it's, it seems to almost work. How did that work for you putting down a target? Yeah, it wasn't something I had done before. I suppose we all kind of look for that 50% and anything above that is a bonus, you know, but um, when you had said it, I kind of did sort of go, well, maybe I could get 70, 75%. That would be kind of the highest mark I would have gotten in any of the exams, you know, so... Um, I certainly had that in my head to try aim high on this one. And like I said, I suppose it, it does work. You know, I suppose if you're aiming for 50, 55, you know, it, it, you might get around there and you might unfortunately fall short. But if you're aiming for 70, you know, if, if things go bad on the day, you might still get well over the line, you know. So I think it's a, it's a mentality or, or something this way of uh, visualizing it does seem, to, does seem to help a bit, you know. But of course, records are there to be broken. So my new target, I suggest, <laughs> for students is 90. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Why absolutely. not? Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Kevin, it's uh, it's a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for all your efforts and for helping out. And, you know, I do genuinely feel that, uh, you know, it's like uh, we should have an, an open top bus for you going down uh, O'Connell <laughs> Street. There's literally thousands of people do this uh, paper I don't know exactly how many did it uh, in in June, but somewhere in around 18,000 would have done it at least. And to come third in the world is an incredible result. And I just want to say congratulations. As I said, I should have the champagne here <laughs> at this stage. But uh, listen, thanks a million and uh, best of luck with everything. OK, thanks. Al. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Really appreciate okay. it. You're really welcome. And thank you. Cheers. Cheers.